Greetings and welcome to Applying the Getting to Outcomes 10 Steps in the Plan, Implement, Evaluate Cycle to Improve Respiratory Care Delivery. I'm Bob Brown, the Developer and Content Manager of the Pulmonary Diagnostic Laboratory Resource Center. This presentation will overview aspects of Getting to Outcomes 2004, abbreviated GTO, and the Plan, Implement, Evaluate, the PI Cycle, and how these implementation science constructs fit so well when developing high-quality healthcare initiatives. Before we begin, you have an assignment. Who would have thought that you had to work while watching a video? I simply want you to identify a specific project that you want to address in the near term. A project could include new or updates to a policy and procedure or new programs, say respiratory therapist-driven protocols, upgrading of an existing or new therapeutic modality or intervention, installation, application of new equipment, etc. So, why am I interested in this topic? Well, my professional careers have provided me with opportunities to be immersed in the healthcare quality world through actions, teachings, and publications. For the last four plus years, while employed in Merck Medical Services Division of Vaccinology, Immunology, and Infectious Diseases, I had the opportunity to daily teach key opinion leaders on implementation science concepts and the importance of incorporating these principles when developing, monitoring, and implementing sustainable immunization programs within their organization. Additionally, prior to implementation science becoming a recognized field, I taught and published on methods to improve upon the quality of pulmonary diagnostic laboratory delivered services. So with that as background, let's get on with this presentation. I have no conflicts to report. These are the focus areas that will be reviewed in this presentation. Just a side note that this presentation's focus is placed on respiratory care. However, the Getting to Outcomes 10 Steps in the Plan, Implement, Evaluate cycle may be employed in all healthcare delivery areas. As background, barriers to healthcare delivery arise not only from insufficient resources and the culture and climate of the organizations, but also from issues commonly associated with service delivery. Too often, healthcare services fail to be efficient, timely, well-organized, evidence-based, and client-centered. Thus, in the recent past, attempts were made to improve healthcare delivery via process improvement approaches that were drawn from fields outside of healthcare, such as organizational development and engineering. It was soon appreciated that these approaches, while successful in manufacturing, were not generally adaptable in a fluid, dynamic environment like healthcare. As we go through this presentation, keep the message from this slide in the back of your mind. Proven implementation science constructs, such as getting to outcomes 10 steps and the plan, implement, evaluate cycle models, plus evidence-based practices, results in high-quality healthcare service delivery. So, what are implementation research and implementation science? A recently developed area of research, implementation research, and its interconnected discipline, implementation science, have been embraced and endorsed by some health-focused educators, professional societies, and organizations. By definition, implementation research is the scientific study of methods to promote the systematic uptake of research findings and other evidence-based practices into routine practice, and hence, to improve the quality and effectiveness of health services. According to the definition proposed by the National Implementation Research Network, implementation science is the study of factors that influence the full and effective use of innovations in practice. The goal is not to answer factual questions about what is, but rather to determine what is required. Also, the National Institute of Health defines implementation science as the study of methods to promote integration of research findings and evidence into healthcare policy and practice. Therefore, for this purpose, implementation science may be considered to be the structured link between translational research and evidence-based medicine, clinical practice, interventions, and outcomes. A major implementation science stipulation is an intervention will not succeed if it is not implemented properly even if it has been shown to be effective in research. For that reason, with the goal of improving the quality of health care, implementation science complements and enhances the transition from focus primarily on quality improvement initiatives. Additionally, 
numerous healthcare professional organizations such as nursing, neurology, psychiatry, are encouraging their members to be more proficient in understanding implementation science principles and applying them in practice. The primary intent is to improve the quality of delivered patient care. For example, the American Thoracic Society has recently published a position paper on implementation science. Healthcare arena has been in a state of transformation for numerous years. Delivery of healthcare costs have dramatically increased without perceivable substantial abatement. Additionally, the need for quality patient interventions to transition from volume-based to value-based care, along with provider and customer satisfaction, are key drivers for change. Since the beginning of the 21st century, there has been a fundamental explosion of reporting in the quantity and quality of dissemination and implementation research. Numerous conceptual frameworks have been developed and key constructs have been validated in the healthcare arena. Various professional health delivery societies have advocated for their members to understand, embrace, and enact quality focused initiatives within their given organizations and practices. There is, however, a paucity of data in the scientific literature addressing quality conceptual frameworks within the respiratory care arena. The intent of this presentation is to overview specific implementation science concepts and strategies to assist respiratory care practitioners with having a better understanding of some potential approaches to developing and sustaining a culture of quality, utilizing standardized quality paradigms and how these strategies can relate to the effective delivery of evidence-based respiratory care, for example, with respiratory therapist-driven protocols. Ultimately, the respiratory care practitioner will be better positioned to appreciate and adapt to a changing healthcare environment and have a better understanding of some of the implementation tools necessary to successfully implement and maintain quality processes in practice. Plan, implement, evaluate PI cycle was incorporated into a 2004 RAND Corporation publication entitled Getting to Outcomes 2004, Promoting Accountability Through Methods and Tools for Planning, Implementation, and Evaluation, with the intent of assisting communities in developing or improving their substance abuse prevention programs. However, currently, GTO is both a model for carrying out prevention programming with quality and a support intervention aimed at enhancing practitioners' capacity. As such, GTO does not advocate for any specific prevention program. Instead, GTO provides supports to improve the quality of a particular program with the goal of achieving positive results. By its design, GTO offers how-to steps for high-quality, outcomes-based programs, which are flexible and applicable to numerous health-based systems improvement initiatives. Getting to outcomes and plan, implement, evaluate implementation science constructs are intimately tied to developing high quality, sustained healthcare delivery programs, which is consistent with the field of respiratory care. So the program offers 10 steps for high quality outcome based interventions. GTO consists of 10 steps that empower implementation teams to do the following. P, plan effective programs that are accountable to stakeholders and achieve intended outcomes. I, implement the programs. E, evaluate the programs to see how well they worked and continuously improve them, providing outcome data. GTO provides tools for demonstrating that a program works and that it uses its resources effectively to achieve and sustain projected goals and outcomes. GTO work was supported by the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Having a good understanding on how the getting to outcomes construct can be applied to the development of new or modifications to existing healthcare initiatives should assist the respiratory care practitioner to embrace and easily integrate the 10 steps into practice. This technical report provides suggestions on how to link the 10 steps. The GTO 10 steps are as follows. Step one. Conduct a needs assessment. Choose which problems to focus on. Step two, identify goals for the program, the people you want to target with the intervention and desired outcomes or objectives. Step three, look for existing programs and best practices worth adopting.
Step 4. Examine the program you choose and see how well it fits the needs of your target population and community. Step 5. Assess whether your organization has the capacity to implement the program. Step 6. Make a plan for implementing the program. Step 7. Think ahead about how you will know whether the program has been implemented successfully. Step 8. Think ahead about how you will measure whether the program meets its goals, reaches its target audience, and achieves its desired outcomes. Step 9. Make a plan for continuous quality improvement of the program. And Step 10. Consider what will be needed to keep the program going if it is successful. If you like one-stop shopping, this slide provides a nice one-page overview resource of the GTO and Pi cycle components. Step 1, needs and resources. Step 2, identification and goals. Step 3, best practices. Step 4, ensuring fit. Step 5, capacities of the program. And I'll talk about capacities in a little bit. Step 6, implementation of the program. Step 7, process evaluation. Step 8, outcome evaluation. Step 9, Continuous Quality Improvement, and Step 10, Sustainability. Using the concept of R equals MC squared may help identify the specific level of organizational readiness and determine the areas in need of improvement and areas of relative strength that can be used to improve organizational readiness. Based on initial levels of each readiness, specific strategies can be identified, delivered, and finally evaluated for effectiveness. Prior to developing concrete strategies and organizing teams, assessing organizational readiness for change is an essential first step. Think how receptive your institution would have been if you wanted to change the way you did business during the height of the SARS-CoV-2 pandemic. Be patient with the process as decision makers and team members may have competing priorities. Developing a detailed overview of your plan may make it easier for extended teams to have a better understanding and appreciation of the importance of your plan for change. Ideally, you would have administration and the medical director in the room when you're detailing the importance of this project. That way, first pass questions can be heard and answered during one sitting versus numerous back and forth discussion. This saves time and frustration. Having representation from the Department of Quality is essential, as they have a good understanding of process development, implementation strategies, and they would be an excellent resource. Representation with nursing is an essential component of your development process team, as they may need to interface with internal and or external clients and provide a brief description of the project intention. Not all respiratory care practitioners need to be involved in all aspects of the process. Select respiratory care practitioners could assume leadership capacities with this project and solicit, collate, and report feedback from respiratory therapy overlays on their thoughts, constructive feedback, application, etc. on the project. These lead respiratory therapists could also apprise their colleagues of project progression thereby keeping the entire respiratory care team updated in a timely manner and making them part of the process. Okay, let's transition to the next section, applying GTO to respiratory care delivery. Keeping the PI cycle framework in mind, Respiratory care practitioners could effectively incorporate the GTO's 10 steps into a quality-focused implementation plan strategy. This succinct document could serve as a roadmap for developing, implementing, monitoring, and evaluating a quality-based improvement program. Keep these steps in mind as a potential application of the Getting to Outcomes construct is outlined with a AARC Expert Panel Reference-Based Clinical Practice Guideline. Also think how this information may be used when developing, evaluating, and monitoring patient-focused respiratory care protocols. The next few slides will overview some important aspects of the changing healthcare environment 
and the potential impact on the sustainment of the respiratory care profession. As background, the first American Association for Respiratory Care Clinical Practice Guidelines were published in Respiratory Care in December of 1991. Since that time, the AARC Clinical Practice Guidelines, CPGs for short, have evolved and have been categorized as evidence-based clinical practice guidelines, of which there are 11, expert panel reference-based guidelines, of which there are 22, and AARC retired guidelines, of which there are 26. For background, the cardiopulmonary diagnostics clinical practice guidelines were retired in 2002 and re relinquished to the American Thoracic Society. They have been modified and updated to be included in the Pulmonary Function Laboratory Management and Procedure Manual, which was first published in 1998. The article, Determining the Value Efficiency of Respiratory Care by Chatburn, Ford, and Kaufman is published in Respiratory Care in December 2021, is a must read. This article provides the philosophical rationale behind the importance of respiratory care practitioners to adopt and engage the concept of value efficiency. It's about raising the awareness of a changing healthcare environment and the potential survival of the profession. Continuing with Respiratory Therapist Driven Protocols, Why Now? This American Association for Respiratory Care position statement that was published in November of 2020 highlights the importance of adopting the value efficiency model to maintain high quality delivery of respiratory care services. The driving factors other than doing the right thing is due to increasing demands of payers, administrators, consultants, and patients. Going back to the article, Determining the Value Efficiency of Respiratory Care, I think one of the key takeaways is the statement, consensus on quality of patient care among those who order treatments, those who provide those treatments, and ultimately those who pay for the treatments. Purchasers will continue to express a desire for more value for their dollar. The performance of any intervention and the individual providing the intervention must demonstrate both value and efficiency. According to Kaufman, while we all need to be efficient in our operations and services, what is most important is that we are delivering a positive outcome for our services. To best serve our patients, families, and communities, we need to pivot from busyness to effectiveness. In the accompanying editorial by Dean Hess on the article, Determining the Value of Efficiency of Respiratory Care, I think the key takeaways are understanding the importance of evidence-based practices and how to apply this principle in the delivery of respiratory care. Also, respiratory care practitioners need to be the evidence-based practices leader with their own and extended teams. This shouldn't just fall on managers to carry this out. To practice near the top of their skill level is not a new concept, nor is stopping the repetition of menial low-level tasks poorly supported by evidence. The beauty of this concept for the respiratory care profession is that a number of tasks have been identified as having a low degree of evidence to support their use in clinical practice. Based upon published resources, we should have a high degree of confidence that evidence-based practices as identified through AARC clinical practice guidelines are available to be utilized in clinical practice and are available to be developed into patient-focused respiratory care protocols. However, as with many things in an evolving healthcare environment, this topic should be closely monitored, have a good understanding if and or when changes need to occur. The importance of patient-focused respiratory care protocols, which is a term that may seem more neutral in tone than respiratory therapist-driven protocols, is evident by the emphasis the American Association for Respiratory Care places on instituting them as best practices. Well, that's it for background. I realize that I front-loaded a ton of background information for this topic, and I thank you for your patience. I simply wanted to highlight some key external and internal factors that are influencing how healthcare is evolving. Some of these factors may not be all that favorable to the respiratory care profession. However, other factors may provide opportunities for the respiratory care profession to improve upon the delivery of care. Having a good understanding how implementation constructs combined with evidence-based practices can influence care will hopefully accomplish this in a positive manner. So let's get back to how the GTO 10 steps and the PI cycle constructs 
could be utilized when breaking down a specific American Association for Respiratory Care clinical practice guideline. As I review this material, keep in the back of your mind how this information might be applied when developing a respiratory therapist-driven protocol. So I have a little bit of a twist on this quotation from Partridge. The production and execution of guidelines needs to be carefully incorporated into a planned dissemination and implementation program. This clinical practice guideline, CPG for short, is one of many expert panel reference-based guidelines developed and endorsed by the American Association for Respiratory Care. I chose this particular CPG since it may be a common procedure across the United States. It's used here to illustrate how the getting to outcomes 10-step process may be utilized to break down key elements of this CPG, which is 14 pages in length, into a format that may make it easier to apply that information for the respiratory care practitioner to use it in the delivery of high-quality patient care, possibly via respiratory therapy-driven protocol. This is my interpretation on how the GTO construct may be applied to a specific AARC CPG. Your interpretation may be different, and that is absolutely encouraged. Remember, clinical practice guidelines provide the what the right intervention might be. However, they do not provide the how to implement the information into care delivery. So unless you plan on coming back to this presentation, I suggest that you make a print screen of the next two slides. Of course, these 10 steps would only be used as a secondary reference a quick visual aid, as the actual clinical practice guideline would readily be available to serve as the primary reference. Remember, the first six steps are for planning. Remember, steps 7 through 10 focus on evaluating and improving. While this example reads similar to a policy and procedure, the format is designed using the GTO 10 steps framework and key components of the 2012 AARC clinical practice guideline. The beauty of the GTO format is that it's flexible to make amendments when new scientific information is available, as well as adaptable to a changing patient condition while utilizing the team approach to decision-making. The plan, do, study, act cycle, PDSA, is another implementation science construct, which can be incorporated incorporated into this plan to continuously assess the effectiveness of the therapeutic intervention as well as modified therapy as the patient condition changes. A plan, do, study, act cycle resource is cited at the end of this presentation. This graphic illustrates how the PI cycle and GTO 10 steps can be used together when developing, evaluating, and implementing a high-quality focused healthcare initiative. The plan, implement, evaluate cycle could ideally be used with each step. As reviewed, it's often difficult to take the information contained, say, in a clinical practice guideline and apply that information into actual clinical practice. Utilizing implementation science constructs like the GTO 10 steps and the PI cycle can assist a respiratory care practitioner with guidance on how to break down scientific data-driven information into a more user-friendly format which can then be used as a roadmap to deliver high quality patient care interventions. This formatting may also allow for easier development, monitoring, and implementation of respiratory therapist driven protocols. So here are my final thoughts. The getting to outcomes model is flexible enough to facilitate many different types of programs. Understanding what some of the components of healthcare change might require does not necessarily translate into effectively developing and employing processes which could maximize improving the delivery of care. Clinical practice guidelines are mechanisms to adopt expert opinion and evidence-based information into clinical practice in order to improve the delivery of quality care. However, Translating clinical practice guidelines into actual clinical practice may be complex and therefore inconsistently implemented. CPGs provide the information on what the right intervention might be, however, they do not provide the how to do it. Implementation science constructs, for example, the GTO and PI cycle, may be effective means to break down complex scientific data-driven information, for example, with, contained within clinical practice guidelines, into usable formats for effective delivery delivery of high quality health care.
Remember in the opening remarks, I asked that you think about a specific project that you want to address in the near term. A project could include new or updates to a policy procedure, upgrade of existing or new therapeutic modality or intervention, installation application of new equipment, etc. So your assignment is based upon what was presented, how will you incorporate the information presented into the format using an implementation science construct that includes assessment of the original proposal regarding dissemination of project proposal information to organization members, what resources are necessary for the project, initial understanding of the project, communication to team and extended teams, documentation and demonstration of initial understanding and competence, documentation and demonstration of continued understanding competence. Suggestions for frequency of monitoring the project effectiveness. Are the goals being attained? If not, does the proposal need to be adapted? Will the project need to be continued, sustainable, be amended and reevaluated, or simply need to end? Quick reminder, this is all work, but it sure is satisfying to have a positive impact on the delivery of care. So this slide lists some select resources addressing implementation science, many of which were used when developing this presentation. Unless you plan to return back to this presentation, I suggest that you take a screenshot of this slide so that this information will be available for your review later on. These are some of the related resources that can be found in the Pulmonary Diagnostic Laboratory Resource Center located at www.pftlabresources.com. Many of the concepts presented, while pulmonary diagnostic services focused, have applicable information to all areas of respiratory care. For those who may not be familiar with implementation science concepts and how they are intimately linked to high-level healthcare delivery, the primer of key concepts located within the implementation science focus area may provide a good introduction to the topic. There is also a video presentation on the Plan, Do, Study Act, the PDSA cycle, which could be used in conjunction with the GTO 10 steps. The GTO 10 steps and Pi cycle video will also be uploaded to the implementation science focus area. Okay, that's it. Thanks so much for taking time out of your busy schedule today. Hopefully there were some new insights or some information that supported what you already knew. Either way, please share your thoughts. My contact information can be found on the Pulmonary Diagnostic Laboratory Resource Center located at www.pftlabresources.com. Also, while on my website, check out the other focus areas by double-clicking on the Resources tab. Thanks so much. Take care.